Hello and welcome to Shredder Zoo. Today we're taking a look at an unusual looking dinosaur, the Therizinosaurus, which roamed Mongolia 70 million years ago during the Cretaceous period. The first fossils of this animal were discovered in 1948 by a joint Soviet-Mongolian fossil expedition in the Nemegt formation of southwestern Mongolia. The expedition unearthed several giant claws that measured up to a metre in length. These were named and described in 1954 by Russian paleontologist Evgeny Meliev. But having so little to go on, Meliev came up with the most inaccurate description of the dinosaur ever put forward. For a start, he didn't even think it was a dinosaur. He believed it was a large diving turtle-like reptile, four and a half metres long, that used the claws to harvest seaweed. It wasn't understood to be a theropod dinosaur until 1970. However, it still wasn't known what kind of dinosaur it was. It was assumed that with these huge claws it must be a carnivore, and was reconstructed with a carnosaur-like head and raptor-like killing claws on its foot. More fossils were found during the 70s and early 80s, but to date this picture shows in red the extent of the fossil remains found. It wasn't until the 1990s that some well-preserved fossils were found of some closely related dinosaurs, namely Alxosaurus and Pupiosaurus. These dinosaurs helped piece together the missing details of Therizinosaurus and allowed paleontologists to provide more accurate reconstructions. The model depicted here in ARC is pretty accurate representation of how Therizinosaurus would have looked like in life. It had three fingered hands with those huge metre long claws, a bipedal stance with four toed feet. Its neck was long, some reconstructions I've seen show it with a longer neck than it is here, and it has a small skull, probably with peg like teeth in its beaked mouth. It measured 10 metres, that's 33 foot in length, and 5 tonnes in weight. They are the largest therizinosaurs known. If you watched last week's video on the Uteranus, you'll remember me talking about feathered dinosaurs. The Uteranus is the record holder for the largest feathered dinosaur, but before its discovery that title was held by Bipiosaurus, a therizinosaur from China. You will notice that the Bipiosaurus is much smaller than the therizinosaurus, and in fact the therizinosaurus is probably bigger than the Uteranus. So why isn't the therizinosaurus the record holder? Clearly we can see feathers on the model used here in ARC. While although it is possible the Therizinosaurus had feathers, no direct evidence for this has been found. As I mentioned last week, large animals are usually bare skinned, such as the elephant or rhino, and this is because large animals lose heat slower than small ones, and so don't need the insulation that fur or feathers provide. So the discovery of Uteranus changed this perception somewhat, and given that Bipiosaurus was feathered, it is possible that Therizinosaurus had feathers too. It's also possible that only juvenile Therizinosaurus had feathers, and lost them once they were big enough not to need them. At this stage, we just don't know. Another aspect that is debated is the diet of Therizinosaurus. Most likely it was a herbivore. Peg-like teeth that are found in related species are more suited to a herbivorous diet. But as the skull of Therizinosaurus has not been found, it's impossible to know for sure. The evolutionary ancestors of the Therizinosaurus were carnivores, and it is possible that meat made up a small amount of its diet. We can look to the modern panda for an equivalent. It eats almost exclusively bamboo, but will occasionally kill and eat small mammals, and the panda is obviously descended from carnivorous bears. But if the Therizinosaur was most likely a herbivore, what were those huge claws used for if not to kill prey? It is thought that the claws would be used as aids in reaching up into the tree canopy to pull down choice pieces of vegetation, in the same kind of way that modern day sloth will also use its long claws to reach its food. Other uses could have been for display, or for interspecies combat, and for defence against predators. Well that's all I have for you this week, and as always I hope you've enjoyed the video and you've learned something new. If you did, please let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. Please check the description of this video for links to my Twitter, Discord and Patreon, and consider sharing this video with someone else who might find this of interest. Please subscribe and come back next time for more here at Shredder Zoo. Goodbye.